He's one of our favorites. He's back here on the Rich Eisen Show, uh, calls Clippers games locally, also uh, nationally on Turner. And, I mean, he's he's got a, a lot of guys and a lot of ladies who uh, pay him to talk into a microphone because he's very good at it. Jim Jackson here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Jim? Good to chat. Uh, it's a good day. My clips play today, man. We got we to gotta rally back. We got to well, rally back. What in the world happened the other night, Jim? What happened? The tendency for the Clippers, low energy. A lot of times you see this with our team, with the Clips, when you have a low energy, uh, we, we, we tend to start off slow. In particular, sometimes you see it in the third quarter. Like when we were up 23 uh, in game four, it was in Dallas and then gave up the lead in the third. You saw the third quarter in game five at home. Hmm. And, and that's been the tendency, unfortunately, for our team. But then also with that, it's like that next game, you see a totally different team. And what I mean by energy, too, is that when when the Clippers play with pace, when they get up and down the court, the ball is moving, it's hopping around. You can't guard everything. That's when it opens it up for, you know, James Harden, the pick and roll with Zubac in the middle, and the lob threat is there. Uh, Paul George now has more space to wait to to work with, but the tendency we've had all year, even when Kawhi's been in the lineup, the ball will stick, and then it'll be slow movement. It'll be the pace will be slower, and, and we don't operate the same efficiency. And I think we're not as potent offensively and defensively when 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 they play like that. Um, not to turn you into an information individual, but how how badly hurt do you think Kawhi is, Jim? I don't know if it's badly hurt. I'm not a doctor. I think the swelling part of it is the issue in that knee. You know, Kawhi played 63 games this year. He played a lot of games, didn't want to miss a lot. They had the maintenance, maintenance some of those games sometimes because of that that knee. And that's the struggle, too, because uh, the, the surgically repaired knee, you come back, you're a little bit older, you play more games, put more pounding on it. And it just so happened that the timing from this perspective of the knee kind of acting up was unfortunate once again for the Clippers. But I, I think you got a really good glimpse and when the team has seen it this year, but they still can survive. If they get through this series and get Kawhi back and healthy to compete for a title, but they can still win games um, without Kawhi. Of course, we want them in there. And I think, you know, Kawhi coming back and playing in game two, it was, um, he didn't look the same. He didn't have the same explosiveness, offensive, defensively, rebounding. Shot was a little flat. Um, it, it was a result of that. And, uh, you know, you want the best for him long term more than anything else. But I, I, I do believe that the Clips get through the Mavericks. He can come back healthy and be ready to go for second round. So um, what do you think of what the Mavericks are putting out there? <laughs> it just – and again, I know game five, recency bias, mm -hmm. but um, Luca puts up a triple-double after apologizing yeah. to Kyrie for not picking up the slack and then just took over Los Angeles. The whole team did. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, in, in the past, too, we, the, the Clippers had problems last year starting Luka. Listen, Luke, I think average maybe 40 points against the Clippers. One-on-one -on -one is not a lot you can do. When, when you have a high usage player like, like Luca, how are you going to stop him? Okay? I mean, what you, what you try to do, and I think Terrence Mann is doing an excellent job of trying to stay with the switches, force him to his right, um, even though he's a right-handed player, but he makes that step back going left. He makes more plays, passing going left. He, you, you just got to make him less efficient like we saw before. You're not going to stop Luca. The ball in it is in his hands too much. He can do too many things. And he's kind of like Joker from this perspective, not from a usage. Because the beautiful thing about Denver and, and Jokic is that the ball gets out of his hands quickly. But where he really beats you is when you overhelp, overcommit, and now he's beating you with the pass. Derek J Jones is hitting three point shots. It's, you know, Cleaver hitting three point shots. That's what beats you, too. Kyrie and. Luca, if they get 30 apiece, okay, that's 60 points. That's 60 points. But when they really beat you is when you overcommit, you don't make them finish on some tough twos, and now they're spraying it open for threes. And I say this about Dallas. I love the moves that they made during the course of the year. My man, Nico Harrison, who I had a relationship since he was at Nike. I mean, getting Gafford in there um, was huge. P.J. Washington was huge. They kind of restructured. And I'll say this too, man. 
I've always been a huge fan of Kyrie. You notice how quiet it's been around Kyrie this year? Mm -hmm. It's been all about basketball. And I think he's in a really, really great place mentally with that franchise, with Mark Cuban, with J. Kidd, with Luka. And as a result, he plays a role that I think he's very comfortable. And and I truly believe that Luka accepts Kyrie for who he is. And that's why I think he was probably a little disappointed in himself that he didn't perform to a high level. A lot had to do with the Clippers and the defense. But knowing kind of where Kyrie has come from and what he's been through and the sacrifices sometimes he's made, but, you know, he's put himself in some position sometimes because of his beliefs, which I don't have a problem with. Um, but, I, you know, Dallas is one of the, is one of those teams I said from, from the time they made the trade, better watch out for them. Better watch out. Those two, plus with the moves they made, they're a tough out. Tim Jackson here on the Rich Eisen Show. Not the question I thought I'd be asking you with the Bucks eliminated in the first round of the playoffs with Giannis not suiting up at all and Lillard being in and out of the lineup. But this is the question everybody's asking today is what, what, what advice would you give Patrick Beverly, Jim? Oh, man, this, it, is, it is hard because I don't know Pat. I don't know Pat. I know he's a competitor. But you can't do that. I mean, you, you just can't. I mean, I've been in situations before where you had hecklers. We used to, remember back in the day, we used to have hecklers <laughs> at games. Robin Vicker sat right behind the bench in Washington. Professional. Okay? He, he was a professional heckler. And he had the bio on you like you wouldn't believe. We had one in Cleveland. Uh, there was one in Detroit. Um, so we've had them before. I mean, extreme. You can't do it. You, you, you just can't. Now, do you want to throw a ball and, ha- hey, catch it and have a good time? That's great. Fire it at somebody, then it ends up hitting somebody in the stands. Man, woman, a child doesn't matter. So he's going to get fined for it. He has, to, he has to suffer the consequences of those decisions. He's a grown man. Now, you can't let allow emotions to get in the way. And I know we're highly competitive people. And, again, I don't know Pat Bev. I love his competitive spirit. But at some point, you can't cross the line. If you do cross the line, there are consequences to it. Just like anything in life. There are consequences to your action. Whether you felt you were in the right in that situation, it doesn't matter. The optics on that do not look good, in particular because you lost the game. Now, he has the personality and the reputation of being a fierce competitor and will push the line. But this time you push the line too far. And with that, I'm sure the commissioner uh, and the uh, fine committee uh, will come down harshly, which they should. Because in, in today's world, with a lot of stuff going on, man, a lot of stuff going on with racial tensions, with you know athletes and social media and all this other stuff, the last thing we need is, is something going awry on the sideline uh, because a player can control their emotions. And that's part of being a professional as well, is being able to control the narrative in certain situations during a game, win, lose, or draw, on what decisions you choose to make. Because at the end of the day, Whoever that fan was, whatever they did, they're going to go to their life. They're going to continue to support the Pacers. And guess what, Pat Bev? You're going to go to yours, okay? But what you don't want is something like this that's going to tag you now at the back end of your career that may hamper what you do moving forward. Jim Jackson here on the Rich Eisen Show. How far can the Knicks go, Jim? What do you think? I think Eastern Conference Finals. I said that before. Because, you know, now, again, a lot of people would look at, well, Giannis didn't play in the Indianapolis, in the Indiana series. So what? Indiana had the number during the regular season. It was a matchup nightmare for Milwaukee, whether Giannis played or not. Giannis had 69 points, 59 points, and two losses when they played him during the regular season. Indiana proved that they were the better team in that matchup. Maybe Milwaukee may have been the overall better team, but in that particular matchup, Milwaukee was better. I mean, Indiana was better. I love this Knicks team. I'm a huge fan of Tom Thibodeau because he was an assistant coach of mine at the Houston Rockets. Love Tom. He's taking a lot of heat, a lot of criticism. The job they've done, Leon Rose, in the front office by restructuring kind of how that team is built. The way they play ball without Randall. And I'm a huge, huge fan of the Villanova young men because I got a chance to cover them when they came into college, watching them mature and win national championships at Villanova. And now you got, you have the three 
Villanova Wildcats kind of leading the way. Josh Hart, heart of the line. This does a little bit of everything. Junkyard dog will defend, will rebound. Now he's not big time three. Okay. Dante DiVincenzo kind of figure things out with Milwaukee, where Golden State kind of found his way. Now he has a niche. And let me tell you something about Jalen Brunson. This one I knew Jalen Brunson was different. In high school, he was probably rated the number one point guard coming out of high school. He could have went anywhere and started. Could have been his program. He chose to go to Villanova. And he chose to come off the bench behind Ryan Archie Diacono, who was a starting point guard and established veteran, to learn how to play the right way under Jay Wright, and to learn from a veteran point guard. That says a lot about this young man's character and his upbringing with Rick Brunson and his mom about understanding and learning about the process of how to be great. You combine that with the undeniable work ethic and the true belief, and then the hunger to prove that, yeah, I'm better than what my draft status was. Put that together, bro. This, you, you can't help but pull for this Knicks team in regard to, with regards to how hard they play. Are they the most talented team? No. But talent doesn't always win you games. It's the gritty, the grind, the, 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 the commitment to play together, uh, the tension to detail. Yes, they've made some mistakes down the stretch. Yes, they've missed some free throws. But when you work hard, you play together, man, gravity has a way of, of, of working out in your favor. Mm. And this Knicks team can get to Eastern Conference Finals, no doubt. No question. Okay. We'll see how that works. The, them against the Pacers is something I'm really looking forward to seeing. And, you know, with all due respect to whoever does emerge from the two series that are still going on in the first round tonight, would you agree that the main event of the second round is Timberwolves and Nuggets? No, it, no the, the main event is wherever Clippers is for me. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. There's bread, no, and you're buttering it, 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 and it needs buttering. It, I understand. It, it, I understand. It, I, but, but no, no, it, it is because here's what I. And this is kind of what I love about them. And I talked about Jokic and his usage rate, which is probably very low. The understanding of how to run offense and defend both sides of the court to have a dynamic player like Jokic who gives it up at the right time, to have Jamal Murray, not an all-star, you know, not a first-team all-NBA, but yet has it when it comes to it. Michael Porter Jr., for everything he's been through, the injuries, can he play, is he rebounding the defense? KCP, defender, knocking down shots. Aaron Gordon reinvented himself, and this is the best thing ever had. We saw it with him coming to um, Denver and playing a certain role and really feeding off Jokic. Question with Peyton Watson and Kristen Braun, could they fill in on the bench and, 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 and kind of do what, you know, Green and, and also Bruce Brown did last year? Reggie Jackson. This is, you look, at, you look at the model of how to build a team, this is it. Around a super, superstar that has no ego, that plays the right way, how do you, it's, it's tough to beat them because they beat you in so many different ways. It's not just one way. It's not one person commanding the ball. The ball moves. It doesn't stick. You got to, you got to guard the, the full real estate. And then you look at this Minnesota team, Rich, I, I don't know about you, mm. but you know, we talked about Anthony Edwards. Uh -huh. Steve Smith told me about him back when he was in high school. Steve Smith, the former Michigan State and yeah. Atlanta Hog works at Turner. Said Jim, I got a young young guy that I, and I've been working with that's going to be different. He's just and he ain't lying, man. And then Cat, I'm gonna give Cat a lot of credit. Um, letting the ego go and understanding the bigger picture, playing a different role this year, accepting that it's probably Anthony's team, but that he and Gobert together can work. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike Conley. Ohio State, come on, man. No, no, he's he, he's been great, and and I'm believe, right, Rich. And, and no, no, uh, he has been superb. He's awesome, and you know when you're going through the Nuggets, that your defending champion Nuggets, and how stout they are, and Jokic and Murray calling game on the Lakers twice, you know, yes. and and how difficult it is to unseat a champion. I kept thinking to myself, but Anthony Edwards is one of those guys who cannot be told he can't you know what i mean no. like and that is no he strikes me as such 
a total wild card in this round that he could mm-hmm. – when, when he sat next to Carl Anthony Towns a couple of days ago – and before they 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 swept broom the the sons, I I played the soundbite here on the show where he told Carl Anthony Towns in front of him to stop f and fouling, and then just look straight ahead. And I thought to myself, I know that there's a lot of Jordan comparisons, and that's unfair. But that right yeah. there, I'm like, oh okay. And Carl Anthony Towns kind of laughed and. But this is Edwards' team, and he is putting his stamp down, and he's basically, stop effing fouling, and we're going to win. I heard that. I'm like, look out. Look yeah, yeah. It, out, it, man. It, But you know why? One, he puts in the work. So he's – and he wants to play. He's right. out there, okay? So when you're a leader, and you, and, you, and you know this, Rich, words have meaning. Words have gravity. But actions have to follow that. And that's what Anthony Edwards brought to the table from day one. He wants to play. He wants to be the best. But he puts in the work. And he's on the court. He's available. So when he speaks, it speaks a lot louder because his actions back it up. And they're sincere because he's, from all understanding, an outstanding team, an outstanding young man, all about the team. Never been about him in regard with regards to it's about me and everything else is secondary. No, he he wants. He said, "I want to be all defensive team, one of the best defensive players. I want to rebound the ball. I want to pass and make my teammates better." How can you not love that? How can you not buy into that narrative from a young man that's kind of cut from a different cloth from from old school? Okay, and and that to me is why this series is so intriguing. And I got to go back and look at the numbers during the regular season on, 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 on this series. But because you have Gobert and Cat that could guard Jokic, and I'm not saying stop him. Notice I said guard. And play him one-on-one when you don't have to give as much help. The key is going to be Aaron Gordon and his offensive rebounding, his lob threat, uh, KCP taking away those open shots, he and Michael Porter. And... Jamal Murray, that that pick and roll game, especially in particular in the middle, because that is so hard to guard because Jokic can step back and shoot. If you go under Murray now, um, can step back and shoot it. How you defend that consistently, not all the time. You, they're going to get some stuff off that action. They're just too good. But it, can you limit that effectiveness, in particular in, in a close game in the last four minutes, where they're not as effective in that pick and roll situation. That right there for Minnesota is going to be the challenge. It's going to be the challenge. And can you win a game at 5-2-8-0, which is the altitude in Denver? Mm. Can you win a game on a road, which is going to be very important? I love it. So uh, I kept you through the break because earlier we were talking about, you know, obviously hecklers behind the bench and Pat Bev and what, all the, you know, ugliness that occurred. Uh, last night in Indianapolis, you mentioned Robin Ficker, which is a name mm-hmm. I am familiar with, and TJ, you are familiar mm-hmm. with, and yeah. Brockman, some old school old heads school, are familiar with. Uh, and right? I mean, a, a Washington-based yeah. heckler, and you said he had the book on you and others. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by the book? Can you explain to people? Because I, I want folks to understand in this day and age <laughs> of rabbit ears and players hearing stuff and getting angry about oh. it, that that this is like, you know, basically you, you're holding their beer, basically, from back in the day with Robin Ficker. So what what's your best Robin Ficker story that he had the book on players? What do you mean by that? Well, it's a, it's a couple of things. Okay. For, you remember when... Um, what was the book Jordan had? The Jordan no, the what Jordan, was it? Uh, yeah, the, the Jordan, Jordan rules. The rules. Yeah. yeah, that was so, uh, that was the old. He was thing. sitting behind the Chicago Bulls bench, reading excerpts <laughs> of that book, saying to the Bulls, Bill Cartwright, reading where Michael Jordan said he didn't want to throw Bill the ball at the end of the game. I mean, just like going at him, like don't throw him the ball. He just he. Bill can't compete in the fourth quarter. Michael doesn't want to throw you the ball. He's saying all this stuff, right? I mean, he would go and research. We're 
let me see, Quinn Buckner was our coach my second year. He's sitting right behind us. Mind you, too, he would wear some Timberlands and stomp. He's sitting there and said, don't listen to him. Quinn trying to draw a play. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's from <laughs> India and he wants to run the train. He said, listen, he had a sign up there. And it's, it had Emmy, yeah, Emmy Action, Amal Mashburn, and Ace and Kid. No he said, the problem is none of you guys got any J's. <laughs> no J's. <laughs> Oh, he he would See, he that was, was clever. Anything I know was he had clever stuff. Smart. He had factual stuff, and then sometimes it got to a point as a player, bro. You couldn't even you couldn't even be mad anymore. <laughs> you just laugh because you look forward. You hated it at first when you went to Washington. But then you look forward to like, man, what he got for us today. Fortunately <laughs> for us, you know, in the Western Conference, you only went once. Right. Sure. Your Eastern Conference team, you went twice, so you got it. But man, I tell you, when you came from the West and he knew you only were there one time, man, he would come with some stuff. Man, he 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 talks some. Oh my God! But I, I, it was it was, and he he was an attorney. Yeah. Keep in mind, this wasn't just like a rabid fan that was unintelligent and just was at the game. This was an attorney. That, that, he would do his research. That, was, that means he must have had a staff. You know what I mean? He could have had a staff, like, you know, working on this sort of Great stuff. Point. You know, he could have had people give him his material yeah, he, for he going up peeps. to the games. His uh, peeps, his peeps worked on it. Man. Different and they, times. And they uh, said he never cursed at the players. Well, that's, just, obviously, that's was, a different no, 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 no. day and age. You just know? was really smart with oh, no, it. was some people that were cursing. Now, don't, don't get that back oh, okay. there. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, but he was, it's funny because when he got in some personal problems is when they took his tickets, mm. from what I remember. And that's when he was removed from the stadium or the arena. But up until that point, he and my guy from Cleveland and Detroit, they were more, more so, it's like Clipper Dan. I mean, Clipper, it's Darryl. Clipper Dan? Clipper Darryl. 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 Clipper yeah. Darryl. Yeah, yeah. They're encouraged to come because the fans get behind them. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're great because they're not crossing the line. They're up to the line, but they don't. I, I don't think Robert has ever said anything or those guys anything racial or anything negative like that. Right. Different. But they get on you. That's a whole different thing. So they were encouraged, and, you know, the, the organizations didn't do anything about that, you know, because that was a part of their home court advantage, having those gentlemen be a part of their crowd and be a part of their fan base. Different time. Jim Jackson, you are the man, sir. Thanks for sticking around. Two segments. We'll chat again real shortly. Good luck to the Clips tonight, sir. It's tonight, baby. Let's Cigar go. in hand, ready to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to have tequila and rum to watch. I'm just going to have the cigars. So I can be in my mental <laughs> state of mind watching the game. i got to be focused. He's all set. <laughs> too, Jim Jackson, too. everybody. <laughs> well done. And obviously, TJ, you, you, you can just – Text him in the, in the game and ask him all the other. Well, save your powder for the next time he's in this chair. <laughs> yeah. I, I already did okay. that. Look, I'm full, Jim, full disclosure, let me tell you what happened. When Jimmy's hosting, he goes to me, he goes, hey, man, you ever need Clippers tickets? Hit me up. Now, that's just something I think you say to be nice to somebody, right? Little did he know, though, <laughs> game one comes, and I'm sitting here, Wait. and I go, you know what? Let me hit Jimmy. Did you up. do it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I game knew, one. I knew the answer. Jeez. I knew there was no way, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to hit him up. Cause Coach hey, hey, Rich, 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 hey, Rich, can he at least ease his way into the day? You know what I mean? Can we, you know, before we go to before we go to Mastro's, bro, can we can we go just grab a bite real quick? Something else to bed, work our way to Mastro's. Hey, I mean, you don't get what you don't ask for. Exactly. Yeah, Close mouths don't get fed. You know? and, oh, me, my. and me and Jimmy Jackson is like this now. So I figured, Jimmy's you know, like, I, I said, look, I already hey, know the listen, answer. Listen, I tried, and my connect and my two connects were like Jim. <laughs> <laughs> we have no playoff. Yeah, now, playoffs. I could have I, I, I found you one in the nosebleeds in 300. But, he didn't want to do but, since, you, boy. but yeah. since you're my boy, <laughs> I said, I can't I can't take care of my boy like that and put him in the 300. That's right. He'd be better off watching it with me at the cigar spot. I'm there you go. Do that, you All know? right. So, you know, let's see if there's round two. Then we just know Boom. cigars. Yeah, I know. Cigars. Boom. Boom. cigars. No, yeah. Round cigars. two. Round two. I got you. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free.